Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ed Platt. I work here at MIT at the Center for Civic Media. And uh, ear earlier this year, I read an article uh, about a guy who appeared to be drunk all the time, but the weird thing was he didn't actually drink. Uh, so doctors kind of looked at him, tried to figure it out. It turned out he had a colony of yeast living in his stomach, fermenting his food into alcohol. Uh, so that was really interesting. Uh, but that's not the most interesting thing I learned this year. Uh, I like to make things, so I decided I should make something with yeast. Uh, you can make bread, you can make alcohol. Uh, I decided to make bread, that's how I roll. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, bread is really old. Uh, it's been around at least as long as ancient Egypt. Uh, the tomb of Ramses III has uh, bread making depicted. And the oldest type of bread is sourdough, which has, uh, in addition to the yeast, uh, lactic acid bacteria. It's the same stuff in yogurt. So it's a, a symbiotic colony. And if you mix those two together, so here are just a cup of flour and a half cup of water uh, will uh, uh, culture a group of lactic acid bacteria and yeast that will continue living and surviving as long as you feed it. So when you mix it together, this is what you actually get. You just get some goo. Uh, so what do you do with the goo if you want to make bread? Well, you just leave it out. Uh, so that's pretty easy, actually. Uh, and after you leave it out for a while, uh, if you leave it at the right temperature, uh, it'll start to activate the microbes. Well, uh, it's you know some of us know here in Massachusetts, uh, it doesn't always get up to 70 degrees you know, all times of the year. Uh, so some people leave their starters by a heater or something like that. Um, I naturally saw an engineering problem and uh, realized that aquarium supply stores have lots of things for uh, promoting uh, conditions for life. Uh, and I bought an a, uh, aquarium heater uh, to build a bath to keep this at the perfect temperature. So after about tw uh, 24 hours, what you get is you start to get some bubbles. That's gas being released from all these microbes in the uh, flower. And what you do uh, is you have to keep feeding it. So what you want to do is uh, empty almost all of it out, just keep a little, and then add another cup of flour, half cup of water, stir it up. And now that it's getting active, you wait only, say, 12 hours. And after about 12 hours, uh, It'll, it'll rise, the, the gas will start to get trapped, and it'll expand. So you keep doing that in, in cycles of 12 hours, and eventually it'll double in 12 hours. And then you know it's ready to make bread. So uh, you get your ingredients. Uh, you need gluten and, and carbohydrates. Uh, so you, know, you can't buy that at the store unless you're a scientist. Uh, so I went to Market Basket and got flour, which has all of these. You mix that with some water, salt, and sugar. It's amazing how little you need to make bread. Uh, you just mix it all together into a dough ball like this. And again, you just sit it out. You know, maybe throw a wet towel over it to keep it from getting dry. And after about eight hours, say, you know, after sleeping or going to work, uh, you take off the towel, and it's like magic. It, you get, it, it doubles in size. Uh, I still haven't gotten used to this yet. Um, and this is the best part. This is my favorite part. You then get to pretend it's something you don't like, like the patriarchy or a sports team you don't like, and you punch it down. Uh, and there's, there's a uh, full-length version of this on my Twitter uh, that I couldn't put in the Excel or the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, and then you knead it. Uh, and kneading it uh, is really neat on a microscopic level, I learned. Uh, what's actually happening, happening is there's the glutens, and they're uh, sticking to each other and forming these long, long chains that make it springy and elastic and help the bread be soft. So after that, you throw it in a pan, and it looks like it's ready to bake, but not quite. Uh, you have to let it rise again, uh, so you form it, put it in the pan, and uh, you let it rise for a couple hours, and then you bake it for about 30 minutes, and you get bread. And it's actually really simple. It takes a while, but it doesn't take a lot of work. Uh, and there's one more step that's really important when you're making bread, uh, which is, of course, you have to uh, cut it up and share it with your friends and enjoy the bread. So that's really the uh, most important thing uh, that I learned, or the most interesting thing I learned this year was how to make bread. Uh, and I'd like to, in this spirit, encourage you to uh, share the things that you make with your friends.